Okay, we're gonna we're gonna be talking through the uh, the uh, universal soil loss equation that's found on page 507 uh, and equation 14.1. I'm just gonna write it up here. A is equal to R, then K, then LS, then C, then P. Each one of these has a uh, a uh, it stands for a particular uh, part of the formula, and this formula is used to predict whether predict how much soil we would lose by means of water erosion on a particular field and it takes into account all the differences that you could uh, that you could put into uh, under or most of the differences uh, that explain fields uh, in one part of the country versus another part of the country so a field that is uh, in so uh, the southeast say in Alabama versus a field in Montana. Uh, what are the differences? Well, there's cr there's climate differences, right? There's there's soils that are completely different. There's ways that people produce crops that are different. So this model aims to take all those factors and um, and kind of put them together to give us a, uh, a an A, which is uh, the predicted annual soil loss in either tons per acre per year or megagrams per hectare per year, the international units. So uh, we're going to follow figure um, figure 14, point, or actually box, box 14.1, page 513. So we're going to kind of be going back and forth in, in, in this section between page 507 and page 513 to help you understand uh, how these equations, how this equation actually works. It's actually a really good learning experience for, um, for for you to understand how we put all this stuff that we've been learning this semester together to predict whether or not we're going to have a high erosion amount or a low erosion amount based on climate, based on soils, based on slope, based on how we crop the how how we um, practice cropping on that field. Uh, so in this case, uh, the first thing that we do is we start out with this R factor. Okay, this R factor is, uh, is what we call rainfall erosivity. Okay, rainfall erosivity. And if you look at figure 14.7 at the top of page 509, you see a map of the United States with a bunch of lines on it. And they're not topography lines, they're basically climate lines. And, and even more specifically, rainfall lines, precipitation uh, lines. And so, so these these lines explain to us that in the West, for instance, in, in Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, we have very little rainfall or very little rainfall that, uh, that would impact, that would be um, of high enough velocity and duration to impact the crop production that we're doing in these areas. You move to somewhere like Florida, and all of a sudden, you've got huge amounts of rainfall that can do a severe that can do severe damage on uh, fields if they're left bare. So, so in a place like Wyoming, you see that we have a rainfall line uh, that that denotes ten. Our R factor there is ten. Okay, uh, and then you move down to Florida, and you see how you have a rainfall factor of something like four hundred and fifty, or five hundred, or six. Hundred, and that becomes your R factor. In this case, we're going to take. Uh, let's see here. Um, we're going to have a location in Iowa on a Marshall silt loam. This is from Box fourteen point one on page five thirteen. Uh, location in Iowa on a Marshall silt loam with an average slope of six percent and an average slope length of hundred meters. The land is clean tilled and fallowed. That little paragraph gives us enough information to go through this calculation and determine what sorts of erosion we can expect in, uh, in this area. So our R factor uh, in this particular place in Iowa, you can see on this map, this map is in, um, is in uh, uh, inter or not international units, it's in um, standard uh, English, English units, uh, and, and we're going to be doing this calculation in international units, so uh, that's that's why you'll see the difference. You see that we're going to pick out uh, 150 for our erosivity uh, factor, and if you trace one of those lines, if you're looking at Iowa and you trace one of those lines back, you'll see that it, uh, that it corresponds to uh, 150. So we're going to pick 150, 
Uh, and when, when we get the international units, it's going to actually be 2550, and that 2550 is, is, is going to be the number that we start, uh, that we start with. Uh, and that's a, you can see in, the, in, the, in figure 14.7, that's a, uh, a, megajoules per, uh, a megajoules per millimeter uh, per hectare uh, uh, per year. So you can see that, that we're starting off with a pretty big number. And this big number, what we're going to do with this big number is we're going to begin to take it and multiply it by each one of these factors and end up with, hopefully, something that is smaller than, than 2,550. Okay, so you can think about this as being taking a big number, multiplying it by other numbers that will hopefully give us a smaller number in the end because the smaller this number, the smaller amount of soil we're going to lose from that particular field. Okay, so that's our R factor. Draw a line here, so there's our R factor. Our K factors are soil erodibility. So this takes into account different types, uh, different types of soils. We read that uh, we're on a Marshall silt loam. So if we look at table 14.1 on 509, you can see that the third soil down there is a Udall Marshall Silt Loam. So that's a Mollisol Marshall, Marshall Silt Loam in Clarinda, Iowa. And you can see that, that the K factor, the soil erosivity factor, is 0 0.044. So we'll put that down here, 0 0.044. So the very first thing we do is uh, we're multiplying this really big number by a really small number. Okay, so we're going to start to cut down that that really big number uh, in, in the midst of going through these uh, going through this complete equation. Okay, so we've got that. Now we need to to think about this LS factor. That's the uh, that's the topographic factor, the length and slope uh, influence on soil uh, soil erosion by water. So you can see that we've got a slope of six percent and an average slope length of a hundred meters from our problem we're going to be turning to page 510, equation 14.8, and we'll be taking a look at the moderate rill to inter rill sites. And that's basically the moderate uh, the ratio between the rill erosion that might happen on that site and the sheet erosion um, that might happen on this site. If we take our numbers, which are 6% uh, slope with an average slope length of 100 meters, when we follow that along, uh, what we'll see is that we're going to gain a, a factor of 1.7. Okay, so 1.7 for our LS factor. Here we go, 1.7. That becomes our LS factor. Okay, so we've taken into account the length uh, and the slope, the top, topo uh, topographic factor. And then finally, we come to the C factor, which is, which is a cropping factor. Uh, what sorts of crops are we growing on there, um, both in terms of cover crops and, and the crops that we're actually um, uh, growing on there from, from year to year, and what we're doing in between those times. So uh, your problem says the C factor is 1, since there's no cover or other management practice to discourage erosion, table 14.2. Um, notes that when you do different kinds of, of uh, practices, so permanent pasture, for instance, would give you a C value of 0 0.003, really, really small. So we're, so we're taking this, these big numbers and we're, we're going to multiply them by a really, really small number and, and come out with a much smaller number. We have some rotation numbers and things like that. If we don't indicate in, in this equation, if we have a field that doesn't do some some version of this doesn't do some sort of um, practice to reduce erosion uh, in terms of its cropping uh, cropping practices. Then we just give it a one. Okay, so that just means you know we don't do anything to uh, to uh, I want to say improve, but that might not be the quite quite the right word. We don't do any of those. Um, those, those cover management cropping practices that help us to control uh, erosion. Finally, we've got the, the support practices or other sorts of erosion control practices that, that, aren't, um, uh, that aren't actual growing of crop practices. Uh, and so 
we, th we see things like contour farming, terraces that may be put, in, uh, put into place, strip cropping, grass waterways, these kinds of other practices that aren't necessarily growing of the crop practices or residue practices uh, left there. Uh, your, your equation says, your box 14.1 says, if we assume the tillage is up and down the hill, the p-value is also uh, the p-value is also 1. Okay, So we don't do any contour practices. This is in table 14.3. We don't do any strip cropping fa uh, practices. We don't do terraces. And we don't, uh, th there's a sub-factor for outlets uh, of the terraces that are moving water um, one, way or the one way or the other. So we're not doing any, any of that. So we don't get to have a factor that reduces the number. If we had one of these factors, for instance, if we were on a, we're on a, the, we're in the 3 to 8 percent slope. If we had some kind of strip cropping or if we had terraces in there, um, we, we, we might be able to, to further reduce, uh, reduce this. But since we don't have any of those practices, we just say, well, we don't do any of that, so it is just 1. Okay. Once you do all this multiplication, you'll come up with a number 191 okay, megagrams per hectare or 85 0.2 tons per acre, and again, these are all per year on a per year annual basis. Okay, 85.2 tons per acre. That's a lot of soil. That's a lot of soil to lose from a field every year, or at least have the possibility in, an, in a normal year to lose that much soil in a field. So now you can start to see that if we do that every year for 25 years, all of a sudden you're going to be you're up against losing a huge amount of uh, of soil to simply rainfall happening on your on your field without any uh, without any other factors. Your normal practices plus rainfall equal this kind of loss. Well, this can be reduced. This can you can reduce this um, if you if you begin to look at these tables and see what practices are available. For instance, no-till, uh, no-till farming might be able to reduce this, leaving a high amount of residue on your field. Terraces or contour farming even can can begin to reduce this. And you'll work a little bit in your uh, in your lab this week uh, on one of these problems. You'll be doing it in the English English units, um, so uh, be ready for that. And we'll be doing the exact same thing that we're doing here. Only we'll have some factors change. We'll, we'll give you. We'll, we'll make you do this once, and then we'll go back and maybe change this factor or change this factor and see what happens to our uh, to that final product.